Good morning everyone and welcome to Every Nation Tuane in Upspa. We want to kick off with the celebrations. Um, we want to celebrate all the birthdays, the anniversaries, weddings, pregnancies, um, whatever you can think of. We want to celebrate this with you this morning. Uh, and congratulations and hope the Lord bless you. Yes, family. We will be having our first victory training for the year. What's really amazing about this, it will not be a Zoom or online training. We'll be meeting in person. So we will be joining with Every Nation Highfelt, also previously known as Every Nation South Downs. Um, the venue will be at Centurion Academy in Highfelt. It will occur on the 2nd and the 3rd of October. Um, if you haven't attended a victory training yet, I really want to encourage you to register. Um, it's really an amazing experience. I can still remember our first victory training that we attended. Um, you know, just to realize sometimes the bondage that you are kept in and that real, uh, Christ really came to set you free from that uh, was really an amazing experience and, and we're still living in that freedom up to today. Um, so I really want to encourage you, uh, please uh, register. Uh, the links will be provided. There is a cost of 250 Rand per person, um, but please register for the, for the victory training. It's really going to be an amazing experience. Yes, and then we are so super excited to announce that we will be meeting together again um, since the first time after lockdown for a Sunday service. Let's celebrate! Woo! Woo <laughs> this will happen on the 4th of October at 9 o'clock. Um, this time it will not be at the Large Girl in Upspa, but it will be at the Centurion Academy in Highfeld. Um, there will be Kids Church as well. And then after the service, we will have a picnic um, just to get together, to catch up and to mingle and celebrate and just enjoy everything that we do. <laughs> yes, guys. So please, please remember to bring chairs, gazebos, blankets, your picnic. We're just really going to get together and just, you know, celebrate each other as family and meeting each other again. It's yes. really going to be amazing. So we're really looking forward to seeing you there. Then guys, um, we also have ordained uh, two couples, uh, Moritz and Michelle Zitzman, and also Johan and Susan Lombard. Um, so guys, um, if you see them, please congratulate them, welcome them as the elders. Um, uh, and yes, uh, let's quickly watch a video of video. Yes. Hello everybody, welcome to this special moment. It's another first for us again, ordaining elders online. We would mostly, I mean, much better prefer to be with you and have you in presence, but wherever you are all over the city, this is a vital moment for us as we believe in leadership and raising leaders. And this is one of those moments where we ordain elders, which is a biblical model that we see in the Word of God, where God ordained elders and calls them to model, to live and to lead all of us, you know, into the purpose of God. And this is my great honor this morning to introduce to you three congregations that we're going to ordain elders, you know, with um, this morning. And with me is my good friend and our apostolic leader for Southern Africa, Pastor Roger Pierce. And we've asked him to lead this moment because as a family, we really believe that we ourselves are under submission of the leadership God's given us. And that's why we invite outside apostolic elders and people to come in, apostolic leaders, to come and help us ordain in these moments so that we ourselves make ourselves accountable to the leadership that God's given us. And this is a great moment for us. And it's my privilege to introduce you, Pastor Roger Pierce, who's going to lead us and mandate these new elders into sending them in place for the purpose of God's call them. Thank you, Pastor Roger. Good morning, every nation. Twani. What a privilege to be with you today. I believe that as you go forward with these new elders, you're going to see growth and increase in joy. I want to talk to you today about one disposition, about two attitudes, and about three roles that an elder has. And I'm looking today at 1 Peter chapter 5. Before I go there, I want to tell you what happened to me on Thursday. My wife and I had been down to the coast, to Belito. It was our final day, about 5.30 in the afternoon, sun was starting to set. And we went out, turned her flip-flops, and, and I was barefoot. And as we got onto the boardwalk, there's a long boardwalk in Belito, we saw this whole pod of dolphins come past. And going the other way was this enormous school of about 10 whales. 
Anyway, so we started to follow these whales, and we walked and walked, and it felt like moments, and it was just so beautiful. We were so excited to, to see these dolphins and, and to follow these pods of whales, and eventually, they were gone, and we looked back, and Nicola was in her flip-flops, and I'd been walking barefoot, and it was miles, kilometers and kilometers that we'd gone, yet it felt like just a very, very short walk because we loved what we're doing, because we were excited about what we're doing, because we had a vision for what we're doing. And it's so important for, for you as elders who are being set in, that you're carrying that disposition, that you're carrying the attitude, and that you take on these tasks that I'm going to speak about. Now, the Word of God says in 1 Peter chapter 5, Peter writing, he says, To the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ's suffering, who will also share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is in your care, watching over them, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not pursuing dishonest gain, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade. In the same way, now this is talking to you, the congregation who are watching, submit yourselves to your elders. And then it says, all of you, clothe yourself with humility towards one another because God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. Peter goes on, he says, humble yourself therefore under God's mighty hand so that he may lift you up. We skip down a few verses and he concludes with this and he says, And the God of all grace, who called you into his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little, will restore himself, will restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The first disposition is the disposition of love. Just as Nick and I didn't notice how far we had walked barefoot and her and her flip-flops, we are called to be lovers of God and we are called to be lovers of people. And as you love God's people and as you love God and as you love what you do, grace will come upon you. There will be grace and it won't feel like a burden, it won't feel like a lust, but it'll feel like a joy as you do what you're called to do as elders. Secondly, two attitudes we read here. Attitude of willingness. And uh, there's times where you might feel discouraged. Times you might feel overwhelmed. You might feel tired. In those times, you press into God and you say, Lord, strengthen me again. And God promises his grace will be there. All you need to do is have a willing attitude to say, Lord, use me. Lord, grace me in this time. And the second attitude is one of humility. That as leaders, we are called to be humble. And that is a stance first and foremost towards God. But secondly, towards one another. And then thirdly, talking about the tasks that we have as elders. Three things. We are called to be shepherds. Which is really talking about functioning pastorally towards the people. Secondly, we are called to be examples. We are called to live our lives in such a way that the people around us can follow us and say, look at the way they love Jesus. Look at the way they raise their family. Look at the way they make disciples. Look at the way they share the gospel. And the third thing in this passage of scripture that we see is that we are called to be watchers. And this is about exercising a governmental responsibility. It's watching over the flock through prayer, through watching the doctrine, through watching the praxis. Praxis is a fancy word for, for what you do. So as I conclude, the task of you as elders who are being set in place is to have a disposition of love, to have an attitude of willingness, an attitude of humility, and to take upon yourself these three tasks, these tasks of being shepherds, these tasks of being examples, and tasks of being watchers. And in return, God will give you grace. And to all of you watching, your responsibility is to be humble. And to receive them as your leaders, because as you do, it'll go well with you and you'll prosper. Thank you, Roger. We're going to go ahead now and we're going to basically pray for each one of these congregations. And at the moment, I'm an interim senior leader of Hennops Park. I'm going to ask the Hennops guys to please step forward and we're going to pray for them. And uh, Johan and Susan, 
Moritz and Michelle. Thank you guys. Getting to know you has been really awesome. Your humility is actually what appoints you. Your faithfulness, your love for the people. And it's my privilege today to pray for you and to set you in place as elders in end ups context. Thank you. Father, we pray now in the name of Jesus for these two precious couples. We thank you for their lives. We thank you, Father, for their leadership. Thank you for the lives they model. Thank you, Father, for the amazing examples that they are to so many people. Thank you for the influence they already have in people's lives. Now we pray for an increase of harvest. We pray for more souls to come into your kingdom. We pray, Father, for a greater anointing that the example they live, Father, will impact so many people's lives that they will become the same examples to others again. We set them in place this morning, Father. We thank you for their lives. And Lord, we pray for a greater anointing upon their lives. Protect them, provide for them, Lord God. And may they enjoy you forever. And Father, may they be examples to many others to come into your kingdom. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to ask Yaku from Highfelt to pray for his leaders. Thank you, Yaku. Awesome. Thank you, Phil. Um, yeah, so friends, I have the, the incredible privilege just to ordain in our context today. Andre and Marielle Lowe, and then Jan and Ellen Becker, and they've been serving with me in the South Downs, now Highfelt context since the very beginning, and, and I know that all of you have felt their leadership in the local context as well, and I really just want to say to you guys, I so appreciate your leadership, and I so appreciate more than that your friendship, and it really is an incredible privilege to lead with you and to build the church alongside you guys, and um, so let's pray. Father, I thank you for these two incredible couples. I thank you, Lord, just for their love for you. I thank you, Lord, for their passion and that you've already raised them up, Lord, mm. as, as leaders in the local context, Lord, but yes. also as pillars of strength, pillars of faith, and pillars of perseverance. Mm. I pray specifically, Lord, for Andre and Marel, Lord, just for their zeal for the lost, for those who do not know Jesus, Lord, the zeal yes. for the kingdom of God to come. And I just see, Father, how you are shaping their lives to influence the zeal of yes. others. I thank you, Lord, for Jan and Ellen, Lord, and I see how you planted them and rooted them. And from this seed, Lord, a mighty tree has grown and that is bearing much fruit. And from this tree, many will get shade and many will eat of its fruit and also for themselves, again, um, have life and life in abundance. Father, I thank you just for an increase of grace over their lives. I thank you, Lord, that as they are ordained in the, the local church context, Father, that you've already prepared them for this and you have graced them for the leadership, gifting, and calling that you have placed on their lives. Yes. We honor you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Friends, I have the privilege to hand over to Eugene, who will be facilitating the moment for Hatfield. Well, good morning, family. It's my privilege um, to ordain and set in place both uh, Wesley and, and Anshan Brits. Uh, many of you might not know, but uh, a month ago, actually, um, we handed over Hatfield Church. I had the amazing privilege of handing over Hatfield Church to these incredible, faithful, uh, anointed leaders. Um, and so it is with pleasure that we can set them uh, in place as elders this morning, um, uh, both within our citywide church, but also as the lead elders for, for Hatfield Church. And um, Wesley has been with me as we planted um, Hatfield together, and um, there's no one better that can lead and be lead elders uh, in, this, in this incredible young church. And so let's, uh, let's pray for them. Father, thank you uh, for this incredible couple that you have called God and, and are ordaining um, to lead in this capacity today. Father, in the name of Jesus, by your spirit, we pray that you would empower them and strengthen them in the inner man to lead strong, Lord, to stand strong. And to, and to lead as those who are called, God. I pray that they will continue to be faithful. Um, and we pray, Father God, that uh, you will help them to lead people into your cause, God. That you would lead people into the nations, lead people into the difficult and the dark places of this world. And so we set them in places, elders, um, and we bless them this morning by the, uh, by the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Roger. I'm going to ask all of you at home to stand up right now, to stand if you receive these men and women as your leaders, as your elders. We understand with lockdown, it's unusual circumstances, but if we we're face to face, you would stand now. So please won't you stand as we pray and we finally set them in place. Thank you. Heavenly Father, we pray for grace. We pray for anointing. Lord, we pray, Lord God, that your yoke would be easy upon them. Lord, because of your grace, because of your Holy Spirit, because of your anointing. 
Lord, we pray that you would give to them new gifts, new strengths, Lord God, new graces in the season. Lord, we pray, Lord God, through these elders, through these leaders, that your kingdom would advance mightily in Tswane. Lord, many churches would be planted, many souls would be saved, many disciples would be made, yes. and you would receive glory. Yes, Lord. Lord, we bless these, these individuals, we bless these marriages, we bless their families, Lord, that as they build your house, you would watch over them yes. and prosper them in their families, in their marriages, Lord, in their businesses, whatever they do, Lord God. Yes. And Lord, for everybody at home standing right now, Lord God, Lord, let it be easy for them to follow. Let there be a humility in them to follow. Lord, that together, Lord, leaders and congregants, Lord God, all of us disciples, your kingdom would come through us, Lord, in Twane. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yes, Father, we thank you as we set them in place this morning, Father, that they will be mindful that this is not about us. It's not about them, but it's about you and the nations, Lord God. I thank you, Father, that they would be understanding that they are sent ones, Lord God, on a mission to bring you all the glory due to you. And Father, that nations will bow and come to know you because of their leadership. We thank you, Father, they will lead with humility, they will lead with confidence, but Father, they will also lead, Father, as examples to their children, their own families, and the people around them and the congregations they lead, God, to influence them so together, Father, we can bring you much glory. Thank you for this moment. Thank you, Father, that even as this is in lockdown, Lord, that the same anointing will rest upon their lives. God, that they would excel in everything they do. And Lord, as we together as a citywide leadership team seek to honor you, not just in Twani, but in our region and in the regions of the world, would you grace us? We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Friends, for those of you sitting at home, thank you for joining us. Enjoy the rest of the service. And uh, we ask you that you would humbly follow these leaders and walk with them as we together as a family seek to honor God in all that we do. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of the service. Wow, that was really great. Um, guys, let's go into prayer. Thank you, Father God, that we can honor you today. Thank you, Father, that we know that you are the truth. Thank you, God, that we can celebrate you for elders, Lord. Thank you for the for the weight that they're going to carry, and 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 Lord, just 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 the passion um, that they have for you, Lord. Um, thank you that we can lean on them and that we can trust their advice, Lord. We really want to honor you for them as couples, Lord. Uh, Father, also we also want to celebrate today, and we want to celebrate the fact that we can meet together once again as a family, Lord. Thank you so much for that, Lord. Thank you that that you've taken us through these times. Um, and even through the tough times, Lord, we know that you are still God. We want to honor you for that today, Lord. Uh, Lord, we also want to pray for the service today. Will you please open up your people's hearts, Lord, and open up our ears and also take all our thoughts um, into captivity and under your Lordship, Lord. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning, family. It's so good to be together once again. My name is Fred from the Willows Congregation. We are going to spend some time worshiping and just giving adoration to our Savior, King Jesus. So let's stand together, sit, whatever you feel in your homes. Uh, but as family, let's lift up King Jesus. Done great 
every stone You've been faithful forevermore You have done great things And I know you will do it again For your promises, yes and amen You have done great things God, you do great things Chain, oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted I, oh God, you have done great things. Hallelujah, God, above it all. Break every chain, oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted I, oh God, you have done great things. You have done great things. God, you do. Flow within us 
slow living water Your love, your love is alive It's breaking the darkness It's bringing the light To soften the heart of stone Your love is alive It's breaking the darkness Winning the fight Bringing the Thank you, Lord, for who you are in our lives, Lord Jesus. We lift you up. Thank you, King Jesus.
is our God Age to age Age to age He stands And time is in His hands Beginning and the end Beginning and the end The God at three in one Father, Spirit, Son The Lion and the Lamb The Lion and the Lamb How great is our God Sing with me How great is our God Good morning, family. My name is Marinus. I will be uh, ending off our sermon series on why values with uh, this morning's sermon about family. And it's great to be here with you. Uh, it's just awesome, awesome moment to celebrate. This will be our last recording for Enops Park online. I am glad you are glad. We're all glad about that. Uh, so from next week, the 4th, uh, of October, we're going to be live. We're going to be in Highfelt. So please come together, uh, bring your family with. Uh, Philip's going to do the word, and it's going to be an incredible time of worship 
um, with each other. And so I'm, I'm so chuffed and so glad that we can be in this place in 2020 where we're going back to uh, our new normal. And so, yeah, just on referring to last week's session uh, with Retief was incredible. I enjoyed his sermon so much and it was just such, such a clear moment uh, of, of the why. And I want to tag team today with it. Uh, but before we start, let's close our eyes in prayer and, and we pray and ask God to bless this morning's sermon and the word. Father God, thank you that we can ask you to, to be in this moment with us. You say where two or three are gathered in my name, there you are. And we know you are here in spirit with us in this moment. But I pray, Father, that you will help us understand how incredibly important family is for you. And so it is for us. Uh, thank you for the blessings that you bestow upon us and uh, may you be worshipped through, through the way that we live out family in our congregation, in our community and also in the world. And we thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. So I want to start with a verse quickly uh, before we start and it is out of Ephesians 2 verse 19. And so read with me. He says, Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people, and also members of this household. What is incredible about this, he says, no longer foreigners and strangers. So there was a moment where you and I were foreigners, where you and I were strangers. But then something happened. We were included. Something happened where you and I decided that this is our family. And there's a funny thing that, that I always hear family say is you, you can choose your friends, but not your family members. And uh, that's true and funny. But at the end of the day, if we look at family, it's close together to what spiritual family should look like. It's connected. There's relationship. There is trust. There's love. There's forgiveness. All of those things that come out of a family also needs to be in our spiritual family and our thinking around that. So just a bit of my testimony about where I come from. I was, I was born in Kimberley. Um, and so my mother conceived me uh, in Kimberley. And then I, we moved quickly to Potchestrum uh, in the Northwest. And there me and my mother grew up uh, for the first nine years of my life. Uh, I grew up without a father. Our family was a family of two, just me and my mom. Uh, so we always joke about it and say that uh, um, because I cry in adverts, I cry in movies, I know how to do petties and, and manis because uh, I grew up with four other women. Uh, and so without that father figure, um, our family makeup was dysfunctional. It was not working. It was not supposed to be the way that God intended a family to look like. But it still worked. God has had grace on us in those moments. And I remember it very clearly. We were connected in a spiritual family, a Dutch Reformed church in Potchestrum, uh, on the Bolt where we stayed, uh, close to the university. And that family was family to us because there was no other men around. I had a grandfather and then we had a Duomini and we had a man of God representing what for me would be a father figure in our house. And um, at six years old, we had a spiritual family gathering where he said, is there anyone here that doesn't have a father, a physical father, an earthly father? Uh, you should raise your hand. And I raised my hand as a six-year-old six and my mother was like, put down your hand, put down your hand. And, and, uh, um, and in that moment, he said that if you do not have a father, go into your room at home, close the door, and ask Father God if He doesn't want to be your father. And if if He and and as a six-year-old, I I took him on on it. I went into my room, I waited upon the Lord, and I said to God the Father, I hear you are a good father. Will you not be my father? And in that moment, a six-year-old gave his life to God because he didn't have a dad. His family was dysfunctional. He knew it. 
He knew there was something missing. He saw his mother cry uh, in the evenings because she's, she was alone. There was financial pressures. Things were not working as they should. And I had a moment with Father, the Father God and he pitched up in my room. I experienced with the Holy Spirit the love of the Father for me and I accepted him into my life. And um, that testimony of mine might be something that you also know something about. My testimony would possibly wake up things in your heart because although for me I was, the, I was the only boy growing up without a father in my whole school, today it's different. Today it's almost the norm. Today, if dysfunctional family is not the family, then that is dysfunctional. It's almost like true family values and the way that God wanted us to build a family, um, if it's perfect, then it's wrong. And so I want to speak into our family lives quickly before we move on to spiritual family. And I want to, I want to challenge you that the difficult times are there. Isaiah 43 says it. It says when we go through the, the, the deep water, God says we will not drown. When we go through the fire, you will not be scorned. You will not die because I'm the Lord your God. And it was in those moments when I was six years old that I knew my mother needed something. We needed something. I didn't know what it was. But then God stepped into our family. And we're going to go quite deep quite quickly. But in that moment when God reaches out into our brokenness, when he lifts us out of those things and we allow him to be the father. So just for a second, we have the Trinity of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He is a perfect father. And although you might have a dad on earth, maybe he is the perfect dad for you, and that's great. But even if there is a dad that is a bad father or a dad that is a great father, Father God is still a better one. And so in Matthew says, if, if worldly fathers know what is good to give to their children, how much more our heavenly father? And so even for us as a physical family, Heavenly Father, the Father God, it should be such a great platform for us to build physical family on so that we will have a way of, of negotiating bad moments or tough situations or, uh, or, or seasons that you're, that you're going through as a family, that God is still the one that we look to. And so there's an order here. There is the Father, God. A father, a mother, the children, then family, then friends. But somewhere in between, we've sort of missed the whole spiritual family uh, moment. I've seen those over and over, people preaching about it, people speaking about the order of God. And I just want to say that, that if it was not for a spiritual family, which us as a family, me and my mother, could could connect into. And I want to say something wild, that, that maybe a family is not a family if there's not a spiritual family where they can fit into. It's a wild thing to say. Well, we'll get back to that just in a second. So what does family do? Family creates security on the one side and also purpose. So when my mother remarried, my now father, uh, there, something happened in my testimony because it's growing now, uh, where in the fact that when I was nine, almost 10 years old, my mother remarried. And I married a ma she married a man who I did not know, uh, which she loved, but I also had to learn to love. He needed to learn how to love my mother, but also me in that, in that uh, situation. Because I understood at nine years old that if I do not comply here, this family is going to keep on going being broken. Not whole. Even if God is part of that plan, part of my vision, or my, the way that I, I look at this. And there was a new leader in this family suddenly. He was my new dad. And for a couple of years, 
he was he was not the uncle he was not the um he was he was my new dad but 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 like they always say blood is thicker than water isn't it and so there was time that needed to go by and and with father god counseling and, and being led by him knowing he's he's part of this new family of mine i needed to start to trust my new father and it was incredible because it, it was almost simultaneously where i was still learning how to trust god the father what he was teaching me and now there's a new guy wanting to be my dad he married my my mother and there came a moment where they asked me this question. They asked me, Marinas, do you want to be adopted by your new dad? Do you want to take his name? That was an incredible moment. That was an incredible moment of my life because at six years old, I was adopted into a new family with God the Father in the Spirit. I want to refer back to that verse quickly. He says, consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers. So there was a spiritual family moment for me with God coming into understanding that, that he saves me and that he's my dad. And then he reads, but follow fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. So at six, something happened in the spirit with me. I was in God's, God's presence. Uh, I accepted him as my father, God. And then this happened when I was asked if I want to be part of this family, even taking someone else's name. That was just, that was a pivotal moment in my life where I had to decide at a young age, do I want to be a part of this family and at, to what extent? So this is, this is, a great balance to have where we understand security, but also purpose. And so security gives us that moment where we clutch in, we say yes to, we, we, we not only conform, we throw ourselves into that family moment saying, I am in. I have committed. Yes, I will take this family name and make it mine and so as it happens i went from marina's swart to marina's Hayes. within months uh, there was a moment when i came home from school uh, where there was a big banner saying welcome home marina's Hayes." i walked in immediately knew what was happening and the papers were ready we were we were all happy everyone we were a big family and then my sisters were born. <laughs> and, and our dynamics changed and we became the Hayes family. But today, within this security and the balance of our purpose, I experienced security, but I had to grow into my purpose as a new Hayes in that family. And that's where the conflict came. I didn't agree. I didn't comply. I made it tough for my mother and I made it tough for my new dad because I still had a, quite a lot of identity problems as a youngster, as someone who had the background that I had. And I want to link it quickly with you being in either our spiritual family or being in another spiritual family or not being in spiritual family at all. And I want you to read with me our main verse for the day and I'm going to lead you into this and we're going to come back to, to that just in a second. And so if we look at this verse which says the fellowship of the believers, verse 42 it says they devoted themselves to the apostles teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and prayer. Everyone was full in awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. It sounds like a family to me. It sounds like that's supposed to be just a normal 
day-to-day -day family which agrees upon things. They, they were breaking of bread because we eat together. There were moments where a dad would teach, have a teaching moment, and we would, we would agree and, and take it upon ourselves to grow into that. And then verse 45, it says, They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. So even within a family, that sometimes happened. A dad says no to a holiday moment because mom needs something terribly important. And then there's an exchange. We, we give away things so that someone else can have it. Uh, and then there's that serving moment uh, that Ratif spoke about last week. Verse 46 says, Every day that they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes, ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number, number daily those who were being saved. And I'm thinking that for you who are not part of a spiritual family, what would that look like? What would the growth look like? Who are you breaking bread then with? Are you breaking bread? Is there someone who can help you with the feeling safe moment? And is there someone who is pushing you towards purpose? Because that's ultimately what family does. It gives security and it gives purpose. So when we feel safe in a spiritual family, when there's trust, when trust is built to the moment where purpose can be given, then we don't go back to the whole security thing the whole time. No, no, no. We speak upon purpose as if you are secure. And that's the, that's the thing I want to touch on. So in that family moment with me, my new dad, my mom, and two new sisters, 11 and 13 years younger than me, what God wanted me to understand is that I can trust Him so that I can become secure in Him within a new family set up so that my purpose can come to pass. So that God can do whatever it is He wants to do through me. And this reigns true for you as well. I want to speak about perfect family. If I say perfect family, some of you cringe. Some of you might think, hey, that could be us. I think we're getting something out of this. Yes, it's for me. But I want to, I want to challenge you quickly. I don't think perfect family exists. I think good family exists. I think balanced family exists. I believe that that families can prosper because kids come out of it and they grow and there's love and, and Christ does something in a family and, and it excels. So yes, I do believe in that, but I don't think I believe in the concept of a perfect physical family. Why? I'll read out of Galatians 6.10 quickly, this verse that says, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people especially to those who belong to the family of believers. I believe a physical family has faults, mistakes, gaps, blind spots, all those moments that we talk about. And so does a spiritual family. As the body of Christ, the hand does something different to the elbow. The elbow does something, to the, something different to the shoulder. The shoulder different to the femur. The, and so, go, so, so it goes on that we have a different function in the bigger picture. And some of you who are not in spiritual family sometimes crave that covering, crave that moment where, especially to those who belong to the family of believers, to do good for. Some of you are in spiritual family, but you have not complied. You have not taken the name. You have... You're in there, but you're not in. No one knows, are you committed? And uh, so you want the safety, but the, the process to purpose has not yet happened for you. It might be you right now. There's another type of family that have experienced spiritual family before. You've been in one, and then you've been really, really badly hurt, disappointed. 
And I just want to say, as a spiritual leader, I want to apologize for that. But I also want to say, there's nothing like a perfect spiritual family. And I'm going to ask you something to do right now. This wasn't planned, but I want to ask you if, if you've been hurt by a spiritual family before. If there is a leader that, that disappointed you, maybe there's a father figure or even a father that's disappointed you. I want you not to, I want you to understand that God's placing his finger on that thing right now. Because it's not necessarily what was done to you or what wasn't done to you. Or what, was, what, what was the disappointment? It is the security factor that God wants to touch in your heart right now. Let him do that. Just before we move on, let's pray about it. Father God, I pray that you'll touch, keep your finger on that thing right now. On that insecurity moment, either with trust, whether it be you, whether it be a leader, whether it be a father, a father figure maybe. Pray, Father God, that your Holy Spirit will remind us at the end to come back to this and because you're going to minister from now on in your word until you heal it. I praise you for that healing. I trust you for that healing. In Jesus' name, amen. And so, I don't think there's a perfect family. I believe that we have different functions. So, like an earthly father who... The word in Matthew says is not perfect. We cannot expect that our spiritual family would be perfect. No. But there is safety in it. There's correction in it. There's leadership in it. All of the values on the whys that we have spoken about in, this, in these weeks past and today, the why of family is because we are not made to be islands we need people. Some of the people that I've met before, and maybe I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trample on toes right now, step on them. But sometimes when someone is alone or on their own, then there's certain things that they learn that become bad habits later. Then when they meet family or need to be in family or they get married or, or, they, uh, or they come, there's, there's a moment that God creates uh, healing and they come back into natural family, they've got bad habits that they have to learn not to do anymore. And so it is with us as family, in spiritual family, coming into that the way, the reason that I say there's no perfection in this family, in the physical, is because if it was like that, if we were to be perfect, we will not need spiritual family to create Moments of healing that the gaps would be filled. We come together as imperfect families to an imperfect spiritual family. Why? So that we can cover each other. Cover each other's mistakes. Cover each other's faults. Be the gap for the other one. Um, almost, almost seeing two, two sets of, of wings covering the moment where someone else is needs to be healed or, or there's an attack and we cover each other. The reason why we need each other in spiritual family is because we are not perfect in our earthly families. Does that make sense? I hope it does. And so 2 Corinthians 5, 19 to 20 says this, that God was reconciled the world to himself in Christ. That's important to know. God reconciled the world with him in Christ, not continuing people's sin against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled with God. What is he saying? He's saying that in Christ, because we're in Christ, our relationship with God is fixed. It's aligned. We can grow. We can move from one moment of security to purpose suddenly that pendulum is swinging your family earthly family can move towards what god has for it in purpose and that's where i want to stand still quickly that we are not perfect families we are not in a perfect spiritual family but with being in that spiritual family being in that families coming together we receive healing we receive non-judgment 
training almost. We receive kind words from people who understand us because we're in the same family. There could be a conversation that is, has been needed to be had for a long time coming. And within the safety, the purpose starts happening where we change and become. We are not perfect families because when we have perfect families in a spiritual family, there's no growth. Because this is where conflict is handled properly. It's great for us. So that thing where our family is the foundation of all healthy relationships is true here and it is true here. So I'm ending off by saying spiritual family is the calling for a normal physical family together. But then I'm going to go one step further. That's true for the security of that, of that family. For, so for the security, the, there is a call that Jesus is making in this verse saying, He's calling a family together. But then He's also calling a family into their calling. I'm not inviting you to a perfect spiritual family. I am inviting you into the plan that God has for us in security and then into purpose. If you have a problem with submitting under an authority like a spiritual family, how on earth will you submit under God's authority? It's not perfect, but it's God's. God builds His church. The Word of God says, we plant. He says, someone else waters. But God makes it grow. I want to ask you to trust us. I want to ask you today to let go of those insecurities. Give it to God. You might be in our spiritual family and you see things that are not right. I'm asking you to trust God. Then trust us. That within our being, being family, that we are being reconciled. So that the purpose on earth is not just for our families or our spiritual families, but it is also going out into the purpose of God. And literally that we are therefore Christ ambassadors, Corinthians says. You and I become part of a family in security so that in purpose we could be the ambassadors of Christ that will appeal through us. And he ends off in saying, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled with God. I'm not asking you to be reconciled with a church. I'm not asking you to be reconciled with a spiritual family. I'm asking you to leave those insecurities at the door and be reconciled with God within a spiritual family, within family, and within a relationship with Jesus Christ. His purpose is not our end picture of our purpose now it's for him it's his it's not ours we are part of that and i want to call you out of that hurt i want to call you out of that insecurity i want to call you out of the place where you do not believe anymore that the spiritual family has a place for you and that is a lie why because there's no security then and then there's unfortunately no purpose and families walk around purposeless, hurting, not dealing with the insecurities. And then God cannot do what He wants to do for His kingdom through us, where we are just participants. Family, but participating. I'm calling you not to participation alone. I'm calling you to a relationship with God. Security. And purpose. I hope there's something that you could, could have taken from this. I want to pray with you. And God's still holding his finger there on that moment that we created a couple of minutes back. But I want to come back to that. I want to say sorry as a leader. But I also want to call you out as one. Get out of your hurt. Get out of that situation. God says let go of the things that, 
that come from the past and reach out to what I have for you. And so he's going to pull you out of that. And I want you to understand it happens in a moment, but maybe the healing comes only within spiritual family. So seven years back, we transitioned out of one spiritual movement where we got hurt a lot. Half of it was my, was my fault, uh, was my mistakes. The other half, I don't know how that happened. Or, and God reached out and he offered us a new spiritual family to be healed in. It took us a while. It didn't happen immediately. I needed to learn to trust God more in this spiritual family that I, that I had to trust the spiritual family itself. I'm asking you to trust God. Asking you that God places us in a specific spiritual family so that we can grow into security and into purpose. But I want you to forgive. If there's a physical family that has let you down, hurt you, thrown you out, forgotten about you, the moment into this spiritual family is forgiveness. God says, how can we be forgiven for our sins, but then we choose not to forgive others? And then secondly, if you are in a spiritual family and you are unsure, maybe you're in ours and you're unsure, you're tentative now, there's trust issues, there's, I'm asking you to, especially after five months of lockdown, six months of lockdown, asking you not to make big emotional decisions right now asking you to stick. I'm asking you to trust God more than just leadership. Trust God's leadership in our leadership as well. And then thirdly, and the last one, if you're not in a spiritual family at all, I'm calling you to that. God is calling you to that. Make a decision. If it's ours, then it's great. But if it's not, God show you, let God place you in that specific family. And if this, this family, ask God if it is ours. Because you need to be part of a spiritual family. Let me pray for you. Father God, thank you that we can end off this series and, and end off lockdown, basically, with, with this momentum of understanding safety, and purpose that you are a good father and although there's nothing like a perfect family or perfect spiritual family that you are calling us into that so that we can cover each other so that we can grow so that we can heal feel safe so that your purpose your will be done on earth and Lord in my prayer that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sin against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. And though God were making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. He has committed to us the message of reconciliation. I pray that we take it. I pray we run with it. We'll trust it. I pray that we grow through it. I pray that you will be able to establish your kingdom on earth through us in this way. Family. Amen. We want to thank you for joining us today. And, and in this lockdown time, we are so excited to see you next week, the 4th in Highfeld. The communication will be there. Join us then. But be blessed. Enjoy your Sunday. Enjoy the week to come. And uh, be safe and be purposeful. Amen.